So what we're dealing with here is the perfect storm. We've got a combination of the coronavirus, the oil markets, and problems with the global bond markets, including problems with how the U.S. Treasuries have been trading. And they're supposed to be a super liquid investment. And recently, the government had to step in and infuse some cash into the Treasury markets to keep them from seizing up. The shorter-term issues are going to be the coronavirus and the oil markets. Three, six, nine months, uh, those should be dissipated. However, the long-term problem, and any of you that have been following my work for any length of time know I've been talking about this, the biggest long-term threat that we have, I think, to the financial markets, period, are the global bond markets. But the fact that we've got all three of these things going on simultaneously is exacerbating the situation. And if anything, the coronavirus and the oil markets are exposing the underlying problems in the global bond markets. Now, let's talk about risks. Systematic risk is the fancy way of saying market risk, and systematic risk is the main risk to equity investors. And guys, it's so important for you to understand this, and I don't think very many people realize this, that systematic risk is non-diversifiable risk. Let me repeat that. Systematic risk is non-diversifiable. So, you know, so many people will say, well, I'm diversified, I'm fine. Well, guys, diversification, okay, third bullet point here, diversification reduces stock-specific risk. However, diversification does not affect systematic risk. So by diversifying yourself, all you're doing is you're reducing the risk that you have from owning one stock or two stocks or just a handful of stocks. Okay, so that helps there. However, the bigger issue and what we're experiencing in these major downturns, any major downturn, it's systematic risk. It's non-diversifiable risk. Now, historically, high-quality bonds, U.S. Treasuries, have historically been used to offset equity risk. However, it, it, they're not working very well anymore. And I've been warning people about this for years as the yields on high-quality bonds, predominantly U.S. Treasuries, have fallen and fallen and fallen. And so Treasury bonds now are at ridiculously low rates ridiculously low yields, guys. And so the Treasury bonds are no longer going to be in a position to help as they have in the past. Now, the realities of our current environment are that the S&P 500 could easily fall to 2,000. And depending on when you're watching this video, we might even be down there, okay? But right now, we're above that 2350 level, which would be the next level that we're going to hit. We're not too far above it as I'm making this video. But we could easily fall to 2,000. And I, I think in this downturn here, we're going to easily see 2,000. We could even fall to 1550 or lower on the S&P 500. It's just a matter of math. Depending on how long businesses are shut down, you know, I mean, Nike shut down their stores, Apple shut down their stores. It just goes on and on and on and on. We've never seen anything like this before. So it depends on how long these businesses are shut down as to how much it impacts their 2020 calendar year, 2020 earnings, and then the multiple that investors are willing to put on those earnings. But the combination of those two things, the earnings time, the multiple will dictate where we finish the year at on the S&P 500 or any other index or stock. So if the market, you know, the global marketplace continues to have these challenges, right? The coronavirus, the oil markets, the bond markets, and, and, and the knock-on effect that we're going to see. Guys, we have no clue how long this is going to last or how bad it's going to get. But I just want you to understand that 2000, I would be surprised if we don't go down there. But again, don't be surprised if this turns into a 2007 through 09 time frame and we were down about 55% in the stock market between 2007 and the beginning of 2009, first quarter of 2009, when we bottomed. So if that happens, if we get that similar, a similar percentage-wise pullback, that would take us down to 1550 or even a little bit lower on the S&P 500. So I just want you to understand that mathematically, it is completely within the realm of possibility that that happens. So do not underestimate the seriousness of this situation. It may not get that bad, but it could, okay? So, but what you need to understand too is this is our new normal in the stock market. And what I mean by that is with the 
inability of high quality bonds to offset equity risk, along with the massive amount of liquidity that we now have in the stock market due to the just the you know the the financial system being so automated these days, algorithms. What I'm seeing, and I've been at this a long time, guys, decades, and what I'm seeing is that this increased liquidity has brought about quicker moves in shorter time frames. So we've increased the velocity of the move, and we've decreased the duration that it takes to achieve that velocity. Okay, so the I mean, look at over the last few weeks how hard these markets have been moving. I mean, six, seven, eight, nine percent moves in one day. That's I mean, you just don't see that. But we've now been seeing that back to back to back over the last few weeks. So think about what I'm saying here. Even after the coronavirus and the oil markets, the problems there have dissipated. The bigger underlying problem is the bond market. And that's not going to w- going away anytime soon. If anything, that will get worse over time. Uh, there's over a quarter, and you guys can go out and fact check this stuff. There's over a quarter of the world's government bonds that are trading at negative yields. Now, 20 plus years of you know financial services experience, 25 plus years of trading stocks and options. I can't get my head wrapped around that. Okay, it makes absolutely no sense to me. One thing I do understand is it's not normal, and it can't end well okay so just i just want you to understand that this you know this is our new normal in these super fast drawdowns whenever they happen and so the bottom line is guys you need a loss cutting strategy okay and you need a risk management system and you need a system that will help you understand risk levels in the stock market on an ongoing basis so my risk management system is a system called Simple Market Signals. This is my system, and it took me over 20 years of research and development to put this thing together. And the final component for me finally, finally came together in 2017. And keep in mind, guys, I developed this for my own personal trading and investing. Even with my background, I still needed this. I've studied economics fundamental analysis, technical analysis, and I needed it, okay? So I put this together for my own benefit, but after I worked with it for a while, I have now made it available to the public. So this is my system that I developed for my own personal trading and investing, but I'm now making it available to you, and again, it's called Simple Market Signals. Simple Market Signals is built around a multi-factor market-based model. So the model inputs include intermarket analysis, where I'm looking at different parts of the market, including inputs from the bond market. So that's one of the things that, and this is a proprietary model, guys. I'm not going to give away my secret sauce, but I'm just going to give you, uh, you know, a, a few data points here as, as to some of the things that I'm looking at and why it is, it goes way beyond traditional technical analysis. Okay. And again, it took me over 20 years to figure this out. I'm looking at intermarket analysis, which, you know, it, which is where you're looking at stocks, bonds, commodities, and currencies. Basically, that's intermarket analysis and how they all interplay together. Okay, so I've got components of intermarket analysis that go into the model. I've got breadth indicators, but then you have to understand what breadth indicators to use, right? Which ones to use and then how to read them and what those levels inside of those breadth indicators actually mean. I have measures of volatility again what volatility indicators and measures, and then the, what are the levels within those volatility indicators that matter? You have to understand how to read these things, okay? Um, also, I'm looking at, of course, the price action of the overall stock market, and there's more that goes into this. So the model outputs, what happens after I look at all that data, the model outputs are that I have an indicator that shows me the risk level of the stock market, right? A signal that shows me the risk level of the stock market. And I also then have the trend direction of the stock market. Okay. So there's two components to this. There's a risk component and a trend component. So I understand once, you know, I go through the data and then on the backside, right, the model output would be me understanding what the level of risk is in the stock market at any given point in time. And I understand the trend direction of the stock market. And guys, it is super powerful. When you understand what the risk level is and the trend direction of the market, you can make a whole lot better decisions about uh, investing and whether to even be invested or not. 
so now let's review the signals within my model. So first off, we have the green signal. Now when the signal is green, this means that risk is low in the overall stock market. And the green signal has the best risk reward ratio for equity investors. When the signal is yellow, this means that risk is moderate in the US stock market. And what you can expect during a yellow signal is that the US stock market is going to be sideways to perhaps slightly down. And this is a transition period a lot of times where the signal maybe had been green for a while and then it goes yellow. And then if the situation gets bad enough, that's when we get a red signal. And when the signal is red, that means that risk is high in the stock market. And the red signal has the worst risk reward ratio for equity investors. The model behind the signals is robust and complex. I've simplified the way that I disseminate this information and I've got it down to a green, yellow, red signal so it's easy for everybody to understand. Again, when the signal is green, that is the best risk reward ratio signal for equity investors. When the signal is red, that is the worst risk reward ratio signal for equity investors. And then along with the risk based signals, I have the trend indicator. I call it the early bird indicator, and that is a positive negative indicator on the trend of the overall stock market. And I worked on the trend indicator for seven years trying to figure out the optimal time frame so that I know that the trend indicator is going to be positive for the bulk of most uptrends, but then negative for the bulk of most downtrends. And for my own benefit, that's what I, you know, I worked on it for that long. So all of this I created for my own benefit, and I'm now making it available to you. I deliver my proprietary signals to my subscribers via a weekly newsletter. So every weekend, my subscribers will receive the proprietary risk level signal on the overall US stock market. My subscribers also receive the proprietary trend direction signal on the overall US stock market and the proprietary risk level signals on all 11 major sectors of the S&P 500. So not only do you get the risk level signal on the overall US stock market, but you get an individual signal on all 11 major sectors of the S&P 500. So if you are a sector investor, then you're going to know what's going on with each underlying sector of the S&P 500. And even if you're not a sector investor, it helps you understand. It's kind of like lifting up the hood on the S&P 500 and seeing what's going on underneath the hood of the S&P 500. So you'll understand what's going on beneath the surface. So it's very educational, even if you are only invest in the overall market or an ETF or a mutual fund or, or something like that. So this is super educational and very beneficial for everyone, whether you invest individually in sectors or not. My subscribers also receive market and sector performance information over multiple time frames. So I take a look at the best and worst performing sectors and give you that information. And again, it starts to show trends when you start to see these patterns emerging in the performance of a certain underlying sector, but you'll also get it for the overall market on, you know, for the week, for the month, for three month period. So you start to see trends emerging. So again, very educational and very helpful. You will also receive market commentary from me and a weekly recap on what has happened in the market during the week. And my subscribers receive technical analysis data points that they can use. So along with the trend direction and the risk level signals, you will also get technical analysis data points that are super helpful. And you're going to get fundamental analysis data points. So you'll you know, be able to look at the, the technical data, the fundamental data. You'll have the trend direction. You'll have the risk signals. And I think, as you can see here, guys, it, you know, what I'm delivering here through Simple Market Signals goes way beyond just a single risk-based signal, all right? This is massive, massive amounts of information for a very low price point. 
Additionally, you will receive yield curve information. So you'll, you're going to understand what's going on with the yield curve. And very few people, I think, really understand this. But, you know, if you hear in the news uh, that the yield curve is doing this or the yield curve is doing that, you're going to know every weekend you're going to get this information and an update on what's going on on the yield curve, what it means, and you're going to get the, the yield curve spread. So it really helps to round out your education and your ability to understand these financial data points. So it makes you a much smarter, much wiser, much more successful investor. And you will also get investor education information, little nuggets that I deliver every single weekend to my subscribers. And again, all of this adds up to increase your financial IQ and your success as an investor or trader. Now let's talk about some points to remember. Simple Market Signals is about taking the least amount of risk per unit of possible return. Let me repeat that. Simple Market Signals is about taking the least amount of risk per unit of possible return. Simple Market Signals is a risk reduction and profit optimization model. Simple Market Signals will not pick the exact bottom of any downturn. I just want to set realistic expectations here, guys, okay? But again, for more information on what that might look like, you need to go out and watch some of the videos that I've pointed out in the past. They're out on my YouTube channel. You can see what Simple Market Signals could have done for you in the 2000 through 03 downturn, the 07 through 09, and also during 2018. I've got these different uh, charts out there on the, you know, in video format. So you can see what the entry and exit point would have been based on a red signal, you're out, green signal, you're in. Again, that's the way I use it. <clears throat> but you'll have to uh, make up your own mind as to how you're going to employ the signals. Simple Market Signals is an intelligent way to manage systematic risk. And remember, systematic risk is non-diversifiable. You can be as diversified as you want. You can diversify yourself silly. You can dilute yourself silly with diversification. And you're not going to get rid of or impact systematic risk. Systematic risk is market risk. And that's where Simple Market Signals comes in because Simple Market Signals identifies levels of systematic risk in the market. We believe in buy and manage, okay? Not just buy and hold. We believe in buy and manage. We believe in managing your risk exposure based on the level of market risk at any one point in time. Treasuries aren't working like they used to. So the reality of our current environment now is that you're going to need to manage your risk exposure based on the level of market risk. Simple Market Signals is for intermediate to long-term investors. Simple Market Signals is not designed for day traders. It might help day traders out a little bit, but if somebody's time horizon is just one or two days, Simple Market Signals is really not going to help them that much, okay? Again, a lot of great information in the newsletter. I think everybody could benefit from it. But the reality is that the signals themselves are going to be much more beneficial for somebody that has at least an intermediate to longer term focus, people that are momentum traders, all the way out to the long term investors. Those are the people that are going to benefit the most from simple market signals. Okay. Now, our signals are simple and effective. Okay. The model is complicated, but it's my job to take that complex model and then disseminate the information into a simple to understand format, in this case, the green, yellow, red signals, okay? I'm taking a complicated model and I'm then disseminating the information in a very simple, easy to understand format. So, you know, I've got financial advisors and industry professionals, multimillionaires that are subscribers. So anybody at that level can benefit from this, but also if you're a novice investor, this is your first, you know, one or two years investing, simple market signals is easy enough for you to understand and benefit from. Also, guys, I want to set realistic expectations here. The newsletter isn't fancy. It's effective. It's plain text. There's no color and there's no fluff. All right. So I want you to understand I'm a no BS guy and you're going to get a lot of great data from me. But uh, this is an email newsletter. It's plain text. There's no color. There's no fluff. Just filled with a ton of great information. Now, when you subscribe, 
Okay, understand that everything is tied to your email on file. All right, so once you subscribe, you go out to the website, simplemarketsignals.com, and it'll take you maybe five minutes to subscribe. It's pretty easy, and you just follow the prompts, and then your, you know, your email on file is then going to drive everything going forward. This is an emailed newsletter subscription. That's how we disseminate the information, and you're, you should get an immediate emailed confirmation of your subscription. You will also receive an automatic welcome letter that is automatically generated once you subscribe. So if you don't get that welcome letter beyond your confirmation, okay, of the subscription, if you don't get that welcome letter, if you don't see it in your in basket, then go check your spam, your junk, or your promotion folders, especially in Gmail, having a lot of people that are having the uh, newsletters and everything coming from Simple Market Signals going into the promotion folder. So please make sure that you check your spam, your junk, and your promotion folders uh, if you're not seeing the automatic welcome newsletter and also understand that the newsletters go out on the weekend. All right. So the goal is to get it out Saturdays by 2 p.m. But it could be any time over the weekend, depending on on, uh, you know, how long it's taken me to do the uh, research necessary for that week's newsletter. But I try to get it out by 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every Saturday if I can. Uh, again, earlier, if I can make that happen. And then the next edition Right. Once you subscribe, understand that the next edition, right? So if you just subscribe on a Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever, the next regular edition is going to be set out on Saturday. All right. And then once you subscribe, we will send you as soon as we can the latest edition, but we have to send that out manually. So just be patient with us. But again, within a, a day or two of your subscription, if you don't get this latest edition, then go back and check your spam, junk, and promotion folders. Uh, because it's probably hidden in there, all right? So you should get the automatic welcome letter and then the latest edition within the next, within the next day or two of your subscription. And then again, the standard newsletter goes out every weekend, but we try to make it no later than 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on any Saturday.